and welcome to all of you. You're watching France 24's Tech Show. I'm Julia Seeger. Forget about electric cars. In this edition, we tell you more about electric planes. This, as a Seattle-based startup backed by Boeing, has announced it plans to have passengers travel aboard their hybrid electric plane by 2022. We'll also stop and check in on the advancement of the supersonic plane almost 50 years after the creation of the Concorde. Plus, in Test 24, we'll welcome Spoonie, an artificially intelligent creature, or as its creators put it, a new species that lies in the middle between the real and the digital domain. But first, the practice of paying for likes on social media is growing, and so is the business of click farms. In places like India or Thailand, these companies boost the visibility of brands who pay for their services by artificially inflating their number of fans on sites like Facebook or Instagram. Charles Pelgrin has more. It's a pre-holiday ritual observed by many people, going on social media to choose a hotel or camping ground, seeing how these places are reviewed, and how many likes they have. The formula is simple. The more likes, the better. Deceptively simple. Because the practice of getting more likes can be shady. We head to India, the world leader in budget IT solutions. In the suburbs of New Delhi, this company says it specializes in digital marketing. Hi, I'm Nicolas. We tell them we're French entrepreneurs looking to open a restaurant in Paris. On offer, a host of different methods to boost your number of fans on social media. I think the main one would be Facebook, Facebook Twitter, and then Instagram. Twitter, Instagram, and you do. How long will it take to reach 2,000 like? Do you think it's possible? Obviously, yeah, it's possible. Yeah, this is something which is possible and it requires a couple of weeks. Crammed in the next room are 150 computers and as many employees paid to spend the entire day clicking on their clients' pages, what is referred to as a click farm. They use custom-made fake accounts, and that's what they're offering to do for us. Yeah. What we will do is like we will create a profile for like in, uh, in terms of like a French uh, name in, uh, in the name of French uh, person. Then we will use that profile to publish our reviews on your Facebook page. Okay. India is not the only place where these click farms exist. They've also been opening in the Philippines, Madagascar, or here in Thailand. When the police dismantled this operation. Instead of finding computers, they found 500 smartphones used to like various products on social media. There are also click farms in France. This expert on e-commerce explains that dozens of sites offer the same service. Let's have a look at the price. 15 euros for 100 fans. At that price, popularity comes cheap. Demand is huge. All entrepreneurs who launch a website today, whether it's e-commerce or anything else, their first concern is to be recognized, to have a form of notoriety. It's a breach of trust. A fake like gives a fake image of the brand. While fake comments are illegal as they constitute fake advertising, liking something is not. And click farms take advantage of this loophole. And it's not just about products. Personalities also use their services. The five main candidates in France's last presidential election all have a high number of fake accounts following them, going up to 62%. As it turns out, popularity can be farmed out. And it's time to welcome our in-house expert, Dan and Jay Cattlecar. Hello and welcome, Dan. Hello, Julia. So celebrities, politicians, but also official state bodies have used these click farms to get more likes. That's right. In 2013, the U.S. State Department was reportedly criticized for having spent more than $600,000 to boost their Facebook uh, following. Now, they've received the flag after it was revealed that uh, the biggest fan base was not from the U.S., but from Egypt. So that's now, how they got caught. Absolutely. And there are some quirky ideas coming up because of our obsession with likes and followers. So, for example, in some cities in Russia, there are now vending machines where you can get uh, Instagram likes and followers for a very small fee. So, for example, here in such a vending machine, you uh, get 100 uh, followers, Instagram followers, for a dollar and 20. So that's where our obsession with likes and uh, 
followers is taking us to. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to a whole other story. The aviation industry has been slow to embrace e-planes, mainly because of the weight and cost of lithium-ion battery packs. And that could soon change thanks to a Seattle-based startup called Zenam Aerodan. That's right. The plane that they have envisaged is targeting air travel under 1,000 miles. So this aircraft, which, whose prototype will be tested next year and which will hopefully be into service by 2022, uh, will uh, fly at a range of 700 miles. Now, the two big advantages of using this plane is, of course, lower emissions. Uh, because of the electric propulsion, the emission will be reduced by almost 80% compared to conventional aircrafts. And secondly, you don't have to go to big airports in order to travel these distances. You can use airfields which are closest to your house and you can travel there easily instead of being, you know, obliged to go to, go to these big air, airports where you lose a lot of time. So these are the two big advantages. Now, coming uh, closer to home in Europe, Airbus, is, they have already tested their electric plane. They, the first uh, flight was carried out in 2014. Uh, in 2015, it became the first electric plane to cross the English Channel. And in uh, 2016, that is last year, they had an evolved version of the electric plane. It, they had uh, a combustion engine as well as a range extender. Uh, and that plane uh, did its test in the U.S. So, yes, electric planes are now uh, slowly taking off. And also EasyJet is also, the commercial airline, is also looking at uh, introducing uh, electric planes in the next decade. They have tied up with a U.S. company called Wright Electric. And because we are talking about the future of flight, uh, what about supersonic planes? Have scientists uh, found, you know, a way of making a viable supersonic plane? Well, Concorde has been the benchmark when you talk about uh, passenger supersonic planes. Now, another startup in the U.S. called Boom uh, is uh, they are developing a supersonic plane uh, which, uh, which will try to do things better than what Concorde did because apparently there has been a lot of advances in uh, material sciences, in engine technology, and in aerodynamics. So this plane will uh, cover the distance between London and New York in two and a half hours. And... It, of course, it won't be cheap, but it won't be as expensive as Concorde, so you'll have to shell out $5,000 for a one-way trip. And when could we start flying on this uh, supersonic plane? Uh, the idea is, I think, it's by 2023, in the next five years or so. Thank you so much, Dan. We're going to move on now to Test24. Its creators insist the robot Spoonie isn't here to replace humans, but to help them improve their interactions. It wasn't designed as a humanoid on purpose, because they say those human-like robots promise more than they can actually deliver. Dan, what about this robot? Does it deliver more than expected? Well, we have had quite a few robots on this set so far, and among all of them, I think this is perhaps the most interactive. I mean, just look at it. First of all, it looks very cute. Uh, there's a great stress Hello, on... Uh, instinctive animal-human interaction. So, for example, if I just stare at it, it will start reacting. I get closer to it, it moves back. I come back, it comes closer to me. I tilt my head, it mimics the motion of my head, and so on. So, it, it is a very sensitive robot. You can strike a proper conversation. The idea behind okay. this robot was to create an Amazon Echo in public spaces. So this robot will be installed in public spaces and you can have an easy interaction with it. Uh, the motion is also quite fluid. That's thanks to this KUKA robotics arm. If you remember, we had another uh, KUKA robotics arm on the set uh, when the we tested the AR, right. exactly, AR robotics. So that helps a and lot. And it has a lot of emotions. Like you can really feel Absolutely. different First of all, types of emotions. Absolutely. First of all, it is able to detect the movements because of uh, the three cameras that are in it. It also has seven microphones, and just to give you a little uh, glimpse of how you can uh, interact with it, by starting a normal conversation, I'll, I'll introduce the robot to you. Right. Hello. Hello there. What's your name? My name is Spoonie. Uh, what are you doing here? As you are up there to participate in Tech 24. Okay, uh, give a kiss. Give a kiss. Uh, take a picture. Take a picture. It took a picture of you. Exactly. That's what and we're seeing. In the future, you can share these images with your friends. On social media. Exactly. And the future of this robot is even more interesting because this robot can help you to buy stuff. So, for example, if this robot is 
installed in a store and you are interested in a particular product, it can just look at the product and of course you'll have to uh, pre-feed all the information, your right. address, your credit card details. And, the good and it learns good. very quickly because it already knows that it's on Tech24. Uh, we don't have a lot more time, so let's maybe take a selfie. Why not? Uh, I Spoonie. want to take a picture. Okay, I am getting in position. <laughs> Say, done when the photos are over. There you go, and we'll post Done. this selfie on social media. It's the end of the show, but do stay with us here on France 24. How it re reacts to that time.